October 14th, 1912, former president of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, is shot directly in the chest. But as the blood pours from his body, only one question remains. Is this revenge for Teddy killing President McKinley 10 years earlier? The 1908 United States presidential election is one of the wackiest in American history, as you had four major presidential candidates running at the same time, including Eugene Debs, who was a freaking outright socialist. This was grip it and rip it politics. No one had any idea what was going on. And in the middle of all this, you've got Theodore Roosevelt running on his progressive party platform, which was just created because he got mad at Taft. But while Teddy is hitting the campaign trail on his Taft sucks platform, one of the people that's getting really into his speeches is this guy called John Shrink. See, John Shrink was kind of a interesting kind of guy. See, he had just had an hallucination that the recently assassinated President McKinley told him that his assassin was actually his vice president, some guy by the name of Theodore Roosevelt. Therefore, John decided to go on the tried and true path for anybody who's been contacted by the ghost of a dead American statesman. He went out and bought a cult pistol and he decided to kill Theodore Roosevelt to prevent an American monarchy or something. I mean, it made sense at the time. However, even though we were in the most assassination heavy part of American history, it was still pretty hard to, you know, assassinate someone. So while Shrink was following Teddy around on his stumping tour, he never was able to actually get close enough to like, you know, assassinate him. I do like this little tidbit that apparently he got within like 10 feet of him in Chattanooga but he just kind of got a little bit nervous about it so he couldn't do it you know but eventually the campaign trail would lead to milwaukee wisconsin and there he would get his chance teddy was having dinner in the gilpatrick hotel and he was planning on going to give a speech in the milwaukee auditorium but across the street john shrank was drinking at a bar and this is not a very important detail but i did find it very interesting apparently he was in like a pretty good mood he was buying people drinks and all such as that and at some point in the night he told the bar band to play the star spangled banner and then he danced to it. How do you dance to this? Whenever Roosevelt came outside of the Gilpatrick Hotel, he decided to stand up on top of his car and wave towards the crowd that had gathered to meet him. So it was at this point, Shrink made his move. He leveled his gun and fired. So it was at this point that like Theodore Roosevelt should have just died. Like that's what happens to people who get shot with bullets. They, they die. But this is Theodore flipping Roosevelt. He's not gonna let something like overwhelming odds or like the laws of physics get in the way of him. <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me? In fact, at first, Teddy didn't even think that he had gotten shot. When his bodyguards were wrestling Shrank to the ground, they asked him if he was okay and he's like, yeah, he missed me. He also had the wherewithal to make sure that the crowd then just, you know, like beat John to death or lynch him immediately on the spot. And after that was settled, he was like, you know, I think it's getting a little bit late. You know, we should probably get going, you know, just, just another Tuesday at work. But as they headed to the Milwaukee ballroom, they noticed a bright red stain showing up on Teddy's shirt because he had, in fact, been shot. And they were very reasonably like, yeah, you should go to the hospital because that's where people who get shot go. The hospital. And to this inquiry, Teddy coughed and noticing that he didn't spit up any blood, was like, hmm, this means it has not hit my lungs or my heart. I am good to go. No hospital is necessary. Quote, I have a speech to deliver and I will either deliver it or die may not be an exact quote. You get the point though. So in the direct opposition of, you know, like every single other person, Roosevelt forced the group to go onto the speaking arrangement where 9,000 people waited who once again had no idea that this guy had just been shot. And then he spoke to the crowd for an entire hour. So like literally his assistants were waiting in the wings to catch him, you know, whenever he inevitably just dropped dead. But to everyone's amazement, it never happened. Now at this point, you may be wondering, like what actually happened here? Is Teddy Roosevelt just immune to bullets? Is he immortal? Well, in one of the greatest turns of luck in recorded history, in the exact spot that Teddy was shot, he had in his pocket an eyeglasses case and a folded 50 page speech. When the bullet hit these obstructions, it caused it to change trajectory and go upward into his chest thus missing his heart, and against all odds, saving his life. Like at some point, Roosevelt just stopped caring and he took out the speech with the bullet hole still in it and waved it around to the crowd and was like, it takes more than one bullet to kill a bull moose. Did 50 Cent ever quote that? Because like if he didn't, that was just a missed opportunity. And while I'm positive that Roosevelt's campaign managers were very happy that he was still up there giving diss tracks after he had been shot, immediately after he came off stage, they all but shot him again to make sure that he went to the hospital. At the hospital, Teddy got x-rayed 
and these x-rays showed that the bullet had went four inches up into his chest and cracked a rib. But there was one thing of legitimate concern. See, Theodore Roosevelt's direct presidential predecessor, McKinley, you know, the guy that John Train thought that he was avenging because, you, you know, uh, he hadn't actually been killed by the assassin's bullet that had hit him. He was actually killed by the incredible ineptitude of the doctors who tried to save him by removing the bullet, which caused an infection, thus killing the man. So given this, you know, historical precedent and seeing that Teddy was just, you know, having small talk, they decided to let the bullet stay inside. But what happened to John Shrink? Well, he was getting up to some shenanigans. While he originally didn't want to give his name or anything because he was like, I'm sleepy, I need the rest. He had had a long day. He eventually did give up his reasons and he was like, you know, I'm trying to prevent Roosevelt from becoming an American king or, you know, whatever reason he was given at that moment. But the important detail is my man's was not exactly the biggest on, you know, bathing. He apparently smelled so bad that he was forced to bathe by the sheriff and he had his clothes destroyed. That hurts. It hurt almost as much as being declared legally insane by the judge, which he was. But you know, being called stinky, that hurts in here. Because of the almost unbelievable story of, you know, Teddy getting shot and then giving a speech immediately afterwards, his campaign got a huge boost in goodwill, and we, the viewing public, were gifted with the absolute best campaign photo of all time, which comes from the fact that he changed the name of his political party from the Progressive Party to the Bull Moose Party based on the famous quip that he gave after he got shot. And while this story did cement Theodore Roosevelt's place in the Hall of Manly Men, chapter president right here speaking, it didn't do him much to win the election. Even though the Roosevelt did get more votes than Taft, he was splitting their party's base, which is, you know, not a great idea. And, you know, because of this, Woodrow Wilson had a landslide victory. Years later, Theodore's cousin, Franklin, also ran for a third term for office. And of course, seeing a golden opportunity, journalists contacted John Shrank and asked him what his opinions were on the subject. And he was like, if it was not for these chains, I would strike down holy vengeance. But the truth is, all of this knowledge is meaningless and will never help you survive an assassin's bullet directly to the chest, unless you watch this video.